on the relationship of husband and wife. He's gantzrich lit chazek l'oret ahava. Elman lo yu bana b'nei snuah hazv shalom. A person has to cultivate the love between him and his uh, spouse. So his children, has a shalom, not be the children of a hated wife, has a shalom. According to the Tzara Agra, the Fum Tzara Agra, according to the effort, is the reward. So the more effort you put in the marriage, the more reward you will see both of you growing into spiritual heights. And the way to make a safeguard from not going into quarrels, to get into fights at home, A lot of times the fight in the house comes from the expenses. They speak about the money. They fighting about money, and therefore, a person should not be so strict on his wife when it comes to the household expenses. He says that a jealousy that the woman feels when she sees her friend's son has something that she doesn't is as hard as the grave. Says the Pelewes. We have to know that a woman. It's not that they're super materialistic. It could be sometimes they are, but not all women are materialistic. Rather, the fact that the women usually are the homemakers, so therefore they have more of a connection with the, the you know society and the, the social standing. They're more concerned about their social standing, so therefore they, they feel they need certain things to make their house and their children look a certain way. So therefore it's very important to them and a person has to understand that and therefore shouldn't be super stingy with her. Obviously, if a person doesn't have money, he can explain to his wife, I don't have money for it. But he's talking about where a person is just being cheap in general with his wife and he thinks that, oh, you don't need this, you don't need that, that's it, I'm canceling your Amazon, you love Amazon, you know, you know, you, you already should say, you, you spent so much on Amazon, you have to make Bikat Amazon already, Bikat Amazon. So uh, you, 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 you have to stop spending it for this, we don't need this and that and that. So a person has and she feels it's important and she can explain to him why it's important, he should hear her out, he shouldn't be so quick to just cut her off, rather, he should not be uh, so uh, critical about the expenditure. A person who needs to spend more money on his home than he thinks he does, a person should, should be uh, vigilant to increase the status and the comfort of his home according to what Hashem blessed him, each thing in its proper time. He should always make sure to appease his wife and when she says she needs something, the person should be uh, you know, more, more understanding and try to give it to her. As we know, the Gemara Masech of says, and a bracha shara betoch beto, Ela bishvil, ishto the blessing in a person's house descends only on account of his wife. So a person thinks, oh, my wife says she wants this coat again. I need to spend money on buying her a winter coat. Unbelievable! You have a coat already. No, I need this one for this reason. Whatever it is. So what he says? Nah, I'll save my money. I don't need to spend this whatever four hundred dollars to buy you this coat. And then what? He thinks that he saved money, but then he just stopped himself from getting a bigger bracha of more money in his house. Because the bracha is in your house when your wife is happy and has what she needs. So therefore, bracha is b'schut the wife. Person has to remember that Hashem, He allows His name to be erased for the sake of Shalom Bayit. So therefore, a person shouldn't be the one who triggers Shalom Bayit in his house, rather be the one who makes Shalom Bayit in his house. Therefore, a person should put strength into overcoming strife and allowing Shechina to take root in his house. Also, it means that a husband, part of Shalom Bayit is not to wander off. Some husbands, they wander off. He says, he goes, I'm going to Mincha. Oh yeah, I know you're going to Mincha. And then you're going to disappear for three, four hours. Then you're going to end up here, end up there. I don't see you. Uh, I don't, and then that's why the wife starts saying, I don't want you to go to Mincha, because she's scared that he goes to Mincha, he's not going to come home till who knows when. So therefore, it's not good to go and let a person, let a person, uh, yourself say, I'm going somewhere, and then the wandering off somewhere else, because then they're not even going to let you go to important things. So therefore, besides the fact you bring harm to yourself, you're causing physical harm to your wife, you're making your wife suffer and emotionally distress from this, that she wants to be next to you and you're separating from her, from her and she lives a life of deprivation. So therefore a person should avoid separation as, uh, as much as possible. Before these Zechele Faisal, the Vrimei Gerish Lomim, used to be people used to travel far away for business and they used to have to make sure that their wife shouldn't be suffering, that she would be alone for many months on end. He has to at least send her a letter. He has to, you know, sometimes during, during work hours, People don't answer the phone, busy with clients, and the wife feels, uh, you know, neglected. It's very nice to send her a letter, it would be a letter, or a text message, something, I'm thinking about you. Yeah, hi, how are you? How is your day going so far? This gives a big pick-me-up to the wives. And when you don't contact them the whole day, you just come home. 
So then they look, they feel like you didn't think about them, you feel like you neglected them, they feel like they were deprived of a husband. So therefore a person has to have that in mind. He says you should send some gifts, you should send maybe a teddy bear, you should send a box of chocolates every once in a while to say I thought about you, I know, you, I know, you, I know you're very special to me and whatnot in order that a person should bridge that gap that sometimes his you know, wanderings and his business takes away, him away from his wife. This is a great mitzvah, whether he does it occasionally or whether he does it often. So you see, the two things cause major shalom bayit in a, in a, with, from the husband's side. We're going to get to the wife's side soon, but the husband's side, the Pelevet says, A, it's uh, being very cheap with the wife and being very meticulous on every little penny on the expenditures. And then B, is the is the fact that a person wanders off and disappears for hours on end and she doesn't know where, where he is. He says, he, she texts him, where are you? He says, I'm coming home five minutes. Five minutes become one hour. Well, you said five, an hour ago you are going to come home. What, what is this? She loses trust. She loses her respect. And your, your, your bond is affected by that. So therefore, a person has to know, you can, if you want to go out, be up front. Be up front on where you're going to go. You'll be surprised how many times they'll say, yes, no problem. At least I know where you are. At least I know when you're coming. But the, the worst thing is false expectations, false hope that we breed in them. And then we let them down time after time again. And this breeds a lot of lack of shalom bites. So therefore, we should zocheh to be able to spend time with our wives, be up front with our wives, and be giving because the bracha in our house is bischut the wife.